President Martinez, trustees, Superintendent Aquino, and everyone in the SAISD community. My name is Lisa Rosenthal, and I am the Director for Accountability and Compliance for SAISD. This is the public hearing for the 2021-2022 Texas Academic Performance Report, or TAPER. All districts are required by Texas Education Code to hold a hearing for public discussion, publish the TAPER, and widely disseminate the report. The Texas Academic Performance Report, or TAPER, is published annually by the Texas Education Agency, or TEA. The academic performance reports can be found on TEA's website. They can also be found on our website by going to About SAISD and Performance Reporting, or by clicking on the link below. There are six areas that we will be discussing as we go through this presentation. On the cover page, the annual 2021-2022 state accountability rating for the district has been identified as B. In 2021 and 2020, all districts were identified as not rated declared state of disaster due to the pandemic. The last time that our district officially received a state rating accountability was in 2018-2019 when we were also identified as a B. Also on the cover page is the 2022 special education determination status. Determination status is based on the results driven accountability or RDA, which includes indicators for federally required elements, the state performance plan, data integrity, uncorrected non-compliance and financial aid findings. Districts are identified under one of four outcomes, meets requirement, needs assistance, needs intervention, or needs substantial intervention. For 2022, our determination status is needs assistance. Please note that on the official report, both state and districts are identified as whether or not they have met targets and consistent with previous years, SAISD has missed fewer indicators than the state overall. Star performance. From the beginning of the new STAR test in 2013, there was a delay in actually seeing growth or improvement, but that had stopped and we were seeing improvement by 2017, 2018, and 2019. In 2021, there was a significant drop in performance, both within the district and across the state. In 2022, SISD was able to make a significant amount of ground. In fact, we were able to outpace the state in terms of improvements. At the meets grade level or above, which is an on grade level measure, again, in 2021, there were significant drops in performance but the gains in 2022 have either brought us back to or above the performance levels from 2019 or have moved us closer to the performance levels of 2019. When looking specifically at bilingual education on page 13 of the taper, it compares all students, bilingual, dual language, and English as a second language. The dual language data is very similar to the overall data. We saw a significant drop in 2021, very, very good increases and in improvements in 2022, but overall the program continues to fail, fall slightly short of its pre-pandemic numbers. However, English as a second language, it should be pointed out, has made up ground and has actually improved on their 2019 numbers. Special education performance continues to trail that of the state. It is, again, 
noted that we had significant drops in 2021, significant gains in 2022. And in this case, those gains have brought us to within only one or two points of our 2019 standards. So significant growth for special education students. Prior to the pandemic, SAISD and the state continued to test on average 99% of students. In 2021, both the state and the district only managed to test 88% of students. San Antonio actually tested more students than most large urban districts in the 2021 school year. In 2022, district and state participation rates returned to a more normal state or a pre-pandemic state with the state coming back to 99 and San Antonio ISD assessing 97% of all students. Attendance rates have been dropping over the past few years. They declined significantly in 21 and 22. At this time, our year-to-date average daily attendance is 88.2. So we are hopefully on track to improve over last year and hopefully exceed even 2021. Our longitudinal dropout rates, which reflect the dropout rates of our four-year cohorts have had a long-term goal of dropping below 10%. We reached that goal in 2020 with the class of 2020. 2021 saw a slight increase, but remained below that goal. And our estimated 2022 number is 8.5%. So we have been doing significantly better in reducing the number of dropouts. Our graduation rates continue to improve. We are closing the gap with the state of Texas more and more every year. Please note that the 2022 data reflects an early projection. For college career and military readiness, only annual graduates are considered. So rather than cohort of graduates, as we do with graduation, we're looking at just students who graduated within a specific school year. For the 2021 school year, San Antonio had a college readiness measure of 75.2. Since 2019, San Antonio has exceeded the overall Texas rates and we are projected to an overall rate of 79 for the 2022 school year. We will receive official data on the graduation and CCMR rates in June of 2023. Although individual indicators have shown increases and decreases overall, the past few years have shown significant gains and growth continuing for San Antonio ISD in excess of Texas's standards. For career and military graduates, there was a significant drop for the class of 2020 or the students who graduated in the year 2020, but that was greatly improved upon in 2021 it is of note that military enlistment has not been an option since 2019, but it has been reinstated for the students graduating in the 2023 school year. For post-secondary readiness measures, the APIB percent of students meeting criteria in grades 11 and 12 dropped 10 percentage points from 2020 to 2021 as did the state overall. For advanced or dual course completion, there was a drop in 2021. It is slightly larger than the drop that the state saw, but we continue to outpace the state's dual course completion rates. On 
on to student information on page 27. Our historical membership has been dropping over time over the last few decades. We have seen the lowest drop in uh, the lowest number of students enrolled officially on our PMS date, which is the last Friday in October in 2022 of 44,568. However, this year in 2023, 2022-23, on our official PMS date, again, the last Friday in October, we had increased to 45,326. This was the first increase that we have seen in a while, and we are very happy to see that increase. Another measure on the taper on page 29 is our data quality. It reflects the percent of underreported students. And this is a reflection of our extraordinary PEMS department. They consistently year over year report exceptionally clean data through the PEMS submission system, frequently outperforming the state in terms of data quality. It is a uh, really an asset. Our PEMS department is a, a significant asset to our department, to our, to our district. Demographics and program participation remain relatively unchanged over time. As always, SAISD has significantly more Hispanic, ECODIS, and at-risk students than the state does as a whole, whereas our program participation for bilingual, gifted and talented, and special education remain very consistent with the state on average. In Texas, minority students make up 74% 70 of all students served, but only 44% of teachers identify as minority. In San Antonio ISD, 97% of our students are identified as a minority and 79% of our teachers identify as a minority as well. The bulk of our teachers, 69% identify as Hispanic. The highest degree held by most of our teachers is a bachelor's degree. Over time, we have decreased the total number of staff at SAISD since 2010 by 245. The total number of teachers since 2010 has decreased by 338. It is of note that during that time, we have decreased by almost 10,000 students. So on average, we've lost about one teacher for each of our 37 students lost. Teachers in San Antonio that are considered beginning far outweigh the percent of beginning teachers across the state. However, our principals have slightly more years of experience than those across the state. Another significant way of looking at teachers is by years of experience. Since 2010, the number of teachers with 20 or fewer years of experience has increased by 153 while the number of teachers with more than 20 years of experience has dropped by 491. In 2010, 25% of all teachers with had 20 or more years of experience. In 2022, only 12% of all teachers had 20 or more years of experience. Historical compensation, has kept pace for the most part with the state. The largest gain is seen in 2022 under campus administration, going from $82,541 up to an average of $95,848. However, that large increase most likely reflects the additional calendar days added for campus administrators. This concludes the taper 2021-22 public hearing. Thank you very much for your time and consideration.